passed away. He passed away um, when I was four years old. He died of a heart attack, unfortunately. And um, that's, why, uh, that's why I'm so serious about um, health. He was very unhealthy, um, very unhealthy. Uh, Yeah, he died at 43 years old. He loved you. Yeah, he did. He always said it. He said his, his uh, we were like his. Well, he had another boy, but he really didn't care. He cared about us more. He says he always said that we were his pride and uh, joy boys. He, you know, um, he was a great dad. He had uh, he had seven kids in total, and he took care of all of them. My mom always tells me. My mom always told me uh, t tells tells me my brother while we were getting locked up as a juvenile. Uh, she would always t tell us. She's like, man, if your dad was alive, he would have whooped you guys. You guys would have never ever went to juvenile. You guys would have been straight A students. Does twins run on your mom's side? I'm curious. You know, that's a good question. I don't know where the twins came from. I remember, I remember there's, I think I have a set of twins somewhere in my family, but not close. Do you have a memory of him since you were only four when he passed? I do, I do, I do. Um, I remember, um, I remember, I remember, I remember right before he passed away. Uh, he sat me, he sat, he sat me on his left leg, and he sat my brother on his right leg like this, watching football. And um, he had an apartment, and the apartment was dark. And we were just watching football. And I remember he had to drop me off because he had custody uh, with him him and my mom. And um, he loved us. He loved us. But uh, I think I think before he passed away, I think he was I think he was going through a hard time. I think he was. Um, I think he was in a dark place. No, they divorced. They divorced, I think, when me and my brother turned one. Um, but another memory I can remember is he was building a house for me and my brother and his, um, his daughters. But you know what he always said? He said, he would always say that this house is going to be for my boys, not for the girls, for my boys. And, uh, he was building this big, he was an electrician. He was building this big house in Loxahatchee in Palm Beach County. And Loxahatchee's got a lot of land. It was, he was sitting in, in four acres, four acres of land. And uh, he was building like a two, he was building a two story house. He was a very smart man. He knew how to renovate houses. He know he knew how to build a house from from scrap to you know to nothing to something. You know, um, he always had a new car every month, whether it was a Jaguar, or Mercedes, or BMW. Uh, he was a show off, so I know I know uh, I know I got it from him, um, but he had a lot of issues, a lot of issues. Yeah, he had a lot of issues. Uh, he a good dad. He was a good dad, but um, yeah, he had a lot of problems. Uh, he would. Uh, he would cheat a lot, a lot. Uh, he would go to bars. He would go to bars, start fights with guys. A lot. He would drink. He would drink every day. And uh, he had a big substance. Uh, um, a very big one.
And um, he had like a heart attack at his apartment. And um, he, well, he, he was alone and he, uh, so I guess like one of his women that he had like millions of women went to go see him and caught him at the right time and and uh he uh he got he went they called the ambulance he went to the hospital <clears throat> and um this was one time because he went to the hospital a lot and uh they told him he has to stay the doctor it was a nice doctor the doctor said he has to stay and it'll be best for him you know what I'm saying um and He's so hard-headed. He said, he ripped the IV out of his shit. He said, no, I'm getting the fuck out of here. This, you know, I don't want to stay here. I got things I got to do. Goes home. I say he went home. That doctor was trying to save him. He went home and uh, he had, uh, this time he had a major heart attack. They rushed him to the hospital again. Everything was fine. They had him hook, hooked up onto monitors. And um, what's it called? He, um, it was a night. I remember, the, I remember the night specifically. I remember exactly the night. I was watching TV with my grandma, me and my brother. And uh, my mom came home from work and said, let's go see your dad. Your dad is in the hospital again. He had a heart attack. And we were so happy to go see him. And then um, we get to the hospital. And this is me, like, four years old. And uh, the doctor uh, doctor came out because they told us to sit down. And we we're like, we're wondering, why do we got to sit down? You know, we were waiting for, like, 30 minutes. And they came out to uh, my mom specifically. And, and and the doctor was, I guess the doctor was smart not to tell the kids, us, me and my brother. He went up to my mom and out of nowhere, I seen, uh, I seen um, my, my mom cry. <clears throat> so I, I see, I seen my mom cry and I was like, what's going on? But we were young. We were very, we were, you know, we were very young. And, uh, uh. She comes up to us, very sad, and says, you know, like a Spanish mom, come on, let's go home. And then I remember uh, me and my brother in the backseat asking her, mommy, we want to see daddy, we want to see daddy, where's daddy? And she said, and she lied and she said, uh, daddy's, daddy, daddy is in the hospital, they said that we can't see him. Um, uh, we're gonna see him another day, and we're like, we're like, okay, okay, you know, you know, we're like, okay. A couple days later, I think when my mom, when my mom was ready, she had to break the ice because obviously, you know, our dad was present in our life, you know. Um, whether we saw him for thirty minutes at a Publix, or we saw him 30 minutes at a restaurant, you know, or we would spend a whole day with him or the whole two days. And, uh, you know, uh, my mom came out, uh, to, broke the ice to me and my brother, and she said, she sat us down. She said, sit down. This is the most serious talk. The most serious talk. Shay, damn in the galaxy, I love you. That I, it's the most serious, mind you, I'm four years old. This is the most serious I've ever seen my mom. She, she sat both of us. She said, she, my mom was never strict. She said, sit down, like if we're in the army. And uh, she, looked at, she looked at us and um, she said, uh, your dad passed away. And we're like, what? And um, she broke down and hugged us. And that was that. (sighs) 
So, but <clears throat> I, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, yeah, you know, she, my mom tried her very, <clears throat> her very best to then, like, you could tell it, it kind of took a toll on her. So, cause she's like, I need to be a dad and a mom. And, um, my mom started like getting resentment towards him because he didn't want to change. And uh, I remember my mom always down talking my dad when whenever she would like be mad at me and my brother. And she would always say, um, like me, just mean things, you know, just mean things. And I never knew why she always had a resentment towards him, even after he passed. It's almost like she had, like she had some grief in her, it's like she had anger in her about my dad, or something. And uh, when I finally got older, she finally like told, told me and my brother, why, 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 why you talk about our dad like this? She's like, you want me to be honest with you, guys? Your dad was a good, good dad. He was just a fucked up individual. Uh, Bree, baby, thanks so much for the money. I appreciate it. Well, this is when we got older, not too long ago. And then we asked her why. She broke the ice. She, she said that he cheated on her, on, on her, married, by the way. He cheated on her, um, Almost like 40 times while they were married. Um, uh, like on a daily. Um, and she said that part bothered her a lot. But what bothered her the most is that he didn't want to change. He, he didn't want to stop using. And that's why I'm very passionate about people using. Pete Garcia, thank you so much. Uh, with my brother, with, uh, you know, even though my brother is clean, is getting clean right now, but, you know, I'm, I'm very serious about my family. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, he didn't, he didn't want to, he, he didn't want to stop using, uh, he, and he did a lot. He did used a lot. The one, and if you're wondering which one it is, it's, it's, it's the one that, um, Makes your heart beat fast. That's what he was really into. And he did it with, you know, drinking. And then he, on top of that, he, he smoked, you know, all that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was into that. Imagine being into that and your doctor tells you that you have a weak heart. But you still do it. Why? I asked my dad why. You know? So, um, but yeah, she had resentment towards him a lot because she felt like he left her, he left her with two fucking delinquents. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and she, and she would blame him a lot. And, um, you know, double trouble. She like, you know, how old was he? I don't know if he was 41 or 43. It was one of those. 41 or 43. You weren't a delinquent at four. She didn't start. She didn't talk shit about him around when I was four. She started get, get, having that resentment around when we were teenagers. She would talk a lot of shit about our dad. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, um, yeah, she had a lot, she broke the ice to us and she, she told us why she had resentment towards him. And she said she had resentment towards him because he, he just, he, 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 that she knew that he was a good dad. He was such a good dad. I mean, like, look, look at this. I mean, the picture wasn't lying.
but he was just so fucked. You know, world's greatest dad. I mean, when I tell you guys, this guy had seven kids. I remember being in a house with all my half siblings and he took care of every one of them. Every one of them. That's my dad. I don't know how the fuck he did it. So I pissed her off. I pissed, I pissed her off. Uh, this is him. He's Cuban, so he don't. He's not really like. He doesn't look that American, but this is him. The for the people that are saying that, you know. Yeah. Um, you look nothing like him. No, I, I look like my mom. <laughs> I look like my mom. Um, my um. My um. My 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 uncle my uncle that would play my father figure. He betrayed me. He abandoned he abandoned me and my brother. He was um. I looked, I looked up to him. He was super muscular, super muscular, super muscular. I can show you him right now. That's that that's my uncle. He uh he uh he was an MMA fighter. He was a great football player. He was 6'2, super athletic, and he whooped a lot of ass. <laughs> he didn't play no games. He didn't play no games. He looks like uh Alex Por uh Pereira. But what I I guess where I'm where I'm getting at is um are you sure that's not your dad? Dude, are you a weirdo? That's my mom's brother. Um, he passed away 10 months ago. Uh, he called me. We didn't talk for, for years. I get a phone call from my mom. This is right after I, beco after I become an island boy. I'm in his big ass mansion in the backyard. I get a I get a uh, I get a call from my um my mom and um my mom says I, I I need you to talk to your uncle he's going through a lot and my uncle has a very heavy like Spanish accent like kind of like a gangster like a gangster Spanish accent and um she puts me on the phone with him and I'm like what's up I mind you I haven't talked. I didn't talk to him for like four or five years. So this is my first time hearing him in a long time. He sounded like shit. He said, what's up, Alex? And I'm like, what's up? He's like, man, bro, I heard you doing good in life. Like, just like that. I'm like, yeah. He's like, bro, that's good, bro. Bro, I'm fucked up, bro. Just like that. He says, bro, a lot. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I tell him, what do you mean? He's like, man... I, man, I, I can't go to sleep, bro. I'm happy. I have schizophrenic. He ended up getting schizophrenic. I don't know how. I don't know how. He said, man, I hear a voice in my head. I can't go to sleep. I drink my pain away. He's like, bro, you think you can lend me some of the, some of the things for, that you get for anxiety? I said, bro, I, I don't have any. He's like, he's like, he's like, bro, he's like, bro, I, bro, I go to the store three times a day to get big bottles. I drink my, I drink myself to sleep. You want to know why he drank himself to sleep? Because there was, there was no med, there was no medication. 
that was helping him. You, it got, it got that bad. It got that bad. He had to drink himself to, because every doctor that tried to give him medic, it didn't, it wasn't doing anything to him. And um, he, he, um, he physically abused um, my brother and I. Yes, he had bad CT. Yes, CT uh, damage, bad, bad. Um, he was fucked in the head, fucked. There was no coming back. And the thing, and his lifestyle wasn't helping either. This guy was, when I was little, this guy was so fit. His muscles was the size of my head. I looked up to him. One time he had a road rage. We, he took us to a baseball game. He had a road rage with, with a dad bod type of guy. It was kind of funny. He whooped, he whooped his head. <laughs> he went back in the car. And sped off with us in the car. I looked up to him. But um, he physically, you know, m my brother and I. And um, I had a lot of anger. Anger because of that. A lot. Physically, physically, um, physically, physically, he did it bad. Um, he wasn't a very nice guy. But when you're little and you're young, and you look up to someone like him, I mean, he would take us to the gym. This guy was the only guy there that was lifting 300 pound, deadlifting, you know, all that. 300 pounds, like it was nothing. Athletically built, crazy. No, physically abusing, not set, no. Where was my mom? Always working. So I guess where I'm, so I guess what I'm saying is when you look, when you look up to someone, which I, I looked up to him, I always ask myself, why does he hate me? You know what I'm saying? What did it do? Like, you're always asking yourself, did I do something wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Did I do something wrong? What did I do? And I realized, I remember one time he grabbed me and he, I'm not gonna say too much, but yeah, like that. I'm like, like this, right? And he's like, he, he goes in my ear, he's like, you don't know what the fuck it is to be a man. You let me know when you're. Hey, and um, and I was confused because I was like seven years old. He's like, you don't know what the fuck it means to be a man you know, like that. You let me know when you're, you know, hey, yeah. I got, uh, he got into a bad car accident. He ended up getting MRSA. He lost all his muscles. I always told myself, when I started getting older, when I turned 16, 17, I'm gonna whoop your, I told that to his face one time and he got mad. And, the, and you don't know, you don't wanna know what happened that day. I told myself that, but karma got to him. So I forgave him. Um, So basically what I'm saying is he's the reason why when I was a teenager, I was always so mad. I was so angry. 
on why I wasn't good enough. But then I got older. When I got to adulthood, I asked my grandma, I said, hey, what's Tio Kiko's number? The guy I just showed you, my uncle, the one I'm talking about. I, that's what I would call him, Tio Kiko. I'm like, what's Tio Kiko's number? And she's like, no, 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 don't talk to him, don't talk to him. So I gave up. I asked again another six months. She didn't want to get to me, so I gave up. And all I wanted to tell him is, I want to see you in person. And I want to talk to you like a man. And I want to look you in your eyes. Remember when I said that I want to, when I was younger, that I wanted to, when I get older, I'm going to whoop. Uh, remember when I said that? That's this is what I want to tell him face to face. I understand now. When, when you told me you don't know what it is to be a man, I said, all I wanted to say is to, to his face, not through phone, with him being fragile in a wheelchair or with crutches, all I wanted to tell him is, and I didn't want to say anything else is, I understand you now. All my answers to you have been clear. I know why you were always mad. I know that you were hurt. And that's why you hurt me, I forgave you. I know why you had so much hate in your heart. I get it now. When I was younger, I didn't get it, but I get it. I get it. He passed away. His daughter said he wasn't answering the phone open the door. She thought he was sleeping. He was not responsive. The police said that he was like that for, I think they said it was nine hours. So she said she could smell it. She smelt it. He passed away. We didn't get, I guess what is it called? The autopsy, whatever. We didn't know what it was from. It was from a heart attack. He was struggling very, very bad. He was in a very dark place and I seen it and I felt it and I knew it. He felt like there was no coming back. He did have a lot of demons. You wanna know what's crazy is? I think he, I think he didn't wanna live. I, I, I think he didn't want this anymore. So all I'm telling you guys is, is be good to everyone. Damn, my lips are like, skin is coming out. You don't know what anyone's going through. You don't know how tough life is. You don't know how good Especially men. You don't know how good men could hide their pain. Just remember that. I was taught 
that never be vulnerable. It's fucked up, right? In my head, it's fucked up, right? <clears throat> I was taught to never tell anyone that you're sad or to never be vulnerable. To never let anyone know your emotions. I was taught to deal with your pain by yourself. So babe. They have to turn it real quick. Okay. We need beats like for the laundry and I'm trying do, to do do you need money? <laughs> no, because you gave me extra. Okay. It should be fine. I just need to get literally the beats and baby hangers. Okay. Oh, I love you, babe. Um, I deal with my pain in silence. You get where I'm coming from? <clears throat> I've always, people always tell me, why do you, why, why do you never open up? Why? I tell them, cause, I, cause I'm a man. What are you gonna do for me? How are you gonna help? How are you gonna help me? Lori, damn the sunglasses. You wanna know what's my biggest pet peeve? Are you good, Fly? Are you good, Alex? Don't ask me that. I also have trust issues. I've been backstabbed by majority of everyone that was in my life. Everyone. Lori, damn it, And I've done nothing but be good to other people. I've done nothing but put my feelings to the side. I've always helped people. I've always put people forward where I'd put myself backwards. I've always motivated people even when I wasn't motivated. I always made people happy even when I wasn't happy. I was, I was a people pleaser. And then people say, oh, <clears throat> oh, Fly, you changed. Damn right, it changed. You want to know why? You want to know the answer to that? Life. You don't know how many people. Do I have mods here? Do you, you don't know how many people be like, Fly, you changed. Did you sell your soul? You're not acting like yourself. This is not Fly. This is not the real you. This is not you. Yeah. I changed because you changed. I changed because I'm scared of you. I admit it, I'm scared of the world. I'm scared of everybody. You never know what anyone's intentions are. You never know. You know what I do every single day? I strive for greatness every day. You want your bathroom clean? Yeah, please. I strive for greatness every single day. 
And I think that's it on a positive note. Let's end it on a positive note. You know, I was out eating with my girl today and I'm talking and I got people listening to my conversation. You know what the people were saying while I was talking and they're with their families because we were eating in a restaurant? They kept calling me funny. Man, that boy's a trip. Man, that boy's funny. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because I don't give a F anymore. That's why I'm funny. I admit it. I'm fried. Literally, I'm fucking fried. So, you wanna make fun of me? Go ahead. It makes me... I love the people that, that dislike me. I love the people that don't like me. I love the people that hate me. I love people. I love everyone that doesn't like me. It's weird. Be for real, they're in fest cheers, appreciate it. But you wanna know something crazy? I love everyone. I love everyone. You hate on me? Why are you hating on me? I love you. I don't hate nobody. But you know what's crazy is? Is you can't take what I have, what's inside of here. Doesn't matter how much you hate on me. Doesn't matter how much you tarnish me. Doesn't matter what you do to me. It's all up here. And you want to know something? You want to know why I know deep down inside I'm a good person? It's because I love helping the people that need to be helped. I might play dumb. But let me tell you something. I know how to make somebody's day. I know how to hold conversations. I know how to make people feel good. I motivate people. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people lost in this world. So just because there's a lot of people lost in this world, that doesn't mean that you need to be lost with them. They're gonna call you weird. They're gonna call you a bunch of names. They're gonna, they're gonna keep hating on you. Let them talk shit. Who cares? As long as you're being yourself and you're happy and you're content with yourself, do what you need to do to be a better version of yourself. Not yesterday's version, not today's version, but the future version. Become a better individual. You don't know how many people in this world, in this life, that if I was in the side of the street limping, with cuts all over me, all that, they're not gonna give a fuck. Nikki, thank you so much for the relax, please appreciate it. They don't, there's people out here, they don't care about nobody. We live in a cold world. So why don't you guys do everyone a favor and yourself a favor? Be right there, my God. Why don't you do something different? Why don't you be somebody better? Why don't you do something good for someone? Guys understand that the universe, what you give out, 
is what you receive. What you give out is what you receive. Good people do good things. Hurt people hurt people. So, in your fifth dimensional mind, are you really going to sit there and be negative to your own image? Or are you going to be a positive person for your own image? Which one are you going to be? Are you really going to sit there and pray on somebody's downfall? When you were put on this earth by yourself, you came out by yourself, and you're that worried about somebody else's career, and you want to hate on them for them doing what they want to do, for them doing what they manifested, from they doing what they want to strive to, to do, maybe for themselves, for their family. Why? 3D, 4D, 5D. You really gonna sit there and worry about somebody else? It's your own mind. Be positive. If you don't like someone, who cares? Move on. You're not gonna like it. You're not gonna like a lot of people. The same how same, same thing with me. I'm not gonna like a lot of people either. I'm not. If I go get a job at McDonald's, right, and I'm working in the kitchen, I'm pretty much sure that I'm going to want to be doing my job. And I promise you this, the more that I do my job, the more people are going to have little secret talks about me. <laughs> laughing. Look at them. While they're working with me. They work at McDonald's too. Look at them. He's, 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 he's trying to do so good at flipping the fries, flipping the burgers. <laughs> Fam, you work here too. Fuck. You should be doing good too. You laughing at someone doing good? That's just an example. That's for everything. It can be used for everything. Anything. You work at office. You pick up more phone calls. <laughs> she's so, I bet she's just miserable because she's always on the phone call. She's always picking up the, the business calls. Well, idiot, don't you work for the same firm? Working in a car dealership. <laughs> that guy's always picking up customers. He's, he's, always, he's always talking to customers. He takes too long to sell the cars. Well, he's still selling a car, right? It's too much hate in this world. You really want to sit there and waste your energy and your life and your, lower your frequencies and your vibrations just to sit there and, and fucking hate on somebody else, what, it, what good is that gonna do for you? Nothing. Nothing. Sorry, I just had a puff, whatever. What I, all I'm saying is, is look, at the end of the day, I know that we're all human. I was an effed up individual in the past before. You know when, you wanna know popular, when I was the most popular, when I had all the friends around me? This is gonna, just take this, I want you to remember this real quick. Just take this and, 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 and run with it. I was, quotations the most popular, right? I always had friends in my house, but we didn't do shit because I was, you are who you hang with. Of course, there's gonna be more losers. Losers are gonna hang out with the losers. You know what I'm saying? And I'm on my phone and I'm like, this is me back then when I was in my teenage years. I was like, man, look, man, look at this guy. He, he, look, look, bro, bro, I, wa I, wanna, I wanna take his shit. I wanna rob, yeah, I wanna rob, yeah, yeah, you know. He got, a, he got that belt on, I want that belt. Look at me, I changed my life. I'm that kid now. I'm a loner, I have no friends. I had the belt now. Listen, man, this shit not clean, man, I, man. He, I bet he can't pay better than me. All that hate and all my friends saying, bro, you damn right, bro, you fine, bro, yeah, you right, bro. Yeah, you right, yeah, 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 you right, you right, you right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want me to battle view?
Um, which um. And and by the way, so and then when I went to jail, it can either make you or break you. When I went to juvenile, right? I did about two years, right? I had a lot of time to think. I said to myself, damn, I'm a loser. But you know what? When I was in there, my hamsters in my wheel in my head, all I did was keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. Keep thinking how to become a better person. I finally looked at myself in the mirror. While I was doing it all the time, I looked at myself in the mirror. And I said, I'm a good looking guy. This vacuum's gonna piss me off. I said, damn, I'm a, I'm a good looking guy. You, know, you, you get where I'm coming from? Why am I in here? Why? Why am I in here? I'm handsome. I can do so much with my life. You know? I don't know why, but when I came out, I was smart as fuck. Way smarter than before I went in. I was a dumb man. Because I didn't like myself and I, didn't, I had a low self image. When I came out, I had goals, discipline. I was more stand up, I had more heart. I knew how to say no. You understand what I'm saying? I lost all my friends. They all wanted to, they all wanted to jump me. All of them. You know why? Because I seen through their bullshit. My third eye opened up when I was locked up. When I came out. My third eye opened up. You know what my, my homeboy, that, that was my homeboy before I went in? When I came out, he started acting different. He started shaking more. Started having fake the funk more. The, the the conversations wasn't the same because he knew that he couldn't walk all over me because my, my, my third eye wasn't open before. When I came out, he saw I was open. He's like, you changed. Out of nowhere, he said, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You, bro, you got that, bro. You went to jail. You did all that time. I don't know why you told me this, by the way. I don't care. You went to jail, bro. You're tough. You're all this. That, bro, you got that, bro. You, you're gonna be something in life. Never seen him again. My bestest friend, never seen him again. I lost all my friends when I came out because I was no longer a sheep. So if you're a sheep, right? Get out of that. And let me tell you something. Them friends never did nothing to me. I was always broke. They were always staying in my house. I was the one always feeding them. I was the one that always somehow had the money. They were just leeching off of me. <clears throat> okay, you guys want me to go live with um, Vume? I'm gonna go live with Vume. You guys don't like the real. You guys don't like real shit. I speak the real shit. Tell Vume. Hold on. Does he follow me? Okay, tell Vume I want to go live with him. Everyone's a leech. When your third eye opens, you're going to start seeing a bunch of snakes in the grass. They're all snakes. I don't got no friends. Guys, tell Vume that he could add me. Tell, tell Vume he could add me. I follow him back. Tell Vume he could add me. I follow him back. It's so weird because because that because out of nowhere when I wanted to when I started speaking things into existence like I want to be a rapper this and that and woo to woo 